So today we're going to be talking about acid nomenclature. What this means is that today you're going to learn how to go from acid names to formulas and acid formulas to names. So let's go ahead and get started and in order to help us we're going to utilize this really handy flow chart to guide us through the process. So on this flow chart we have a few options but the most critical thing you need to know before we even approach this flow chart are the names of polyatomic ions. If you need to go back and review the names of polyatomic ions you can go to the last video where we talked about the, their names in the ionic naming system. We're going to start with the idea of what is an acid in general. Now in general, and this is we'll learn later in the year, not always the case, but in general, acid formulas begin with the letter H, with an element of hydrogen. Now we'll talk about why this is later, but in general this is the first thing you should be aware of, and this is going to help you recognize many of the acids we're going to be dealing with this year. So we start with an H, and then we finish with an anion of some form, either elemental or a polyatomic ion. For example, you might be familiar with hydrochloric acid, HCl. Today we're going to discuss how and why it is named the way it is. So let's take a look at the flowchart. Now the first question on the flowchart is asking, is there oxygen in the anion? Now, if there is not oxygen in the anion, we're going to follow the flowchart to the left. And our acid will be named hydro, followed by the root of the anion, followed by ic acid. For example, HCl, hydrochloric acid, the Cl minus has no oxygen in it. It's just chlorine elemental in its ionic form. And so because of this, we call it hydrochloric acid. Hydrobromic acid and hydriotic acid are very similar in that neither of those anions have oxygen. Therefore, we follow the flow chart to the left and we call it hydroic acid with the blank in there being the root of the anion. Now, if the anion does contain oxygen, we're going to follow the flow chart down to the right. And at this point, now we need to assess if the polyatomic ion, which contains oxygen, ends in eight or ite. If the polyatomic ion ends in ite, like sulfite or nitrite, then the acid associated will end in us, O-U-S. If, however, the polyatomic ion ends in eight, like sulfate or nitrate, then the acid associated will end in it. Now I have a really handy polyatomic ion acid naming mnemonic, which is, if you ate something gross, you say ick. In other words, if the polyatomic anion ends in eight, the acid is going to end in ick. So let's do a few examples. We're going to utilize the flow chart to do these, and I'll guide you through the flow chart as we go. So our first example, what we're going to do is look at the, first of all, look at the formula. This is HF. Now we're going to utilize our flow chart to name this acid. We look at the anion, F minus, and we see that it does not contain oxygen. Because it does not contain oxygen, we're going to follow the flow chart down to the left, which means that we have hydro followed by the root, which, because the anion is fluorine, we have the root of fluor, followed by ic, acid. Therefore, this is hydrofluoric acid. So the next example we're going to look at is HNO2. Now HNO2, we look at the anion, NO2, and we see that it does contain an oxygen. This means we're going to follow the flow chart down to the right. This is where polyatomic naming comes in, because now we need to see that NO2, the name is nitrite. Nitrite means we follow the flow chart to the left, and we see that it is going to be nitrous acid. So we use the root of nitrite, we replace the ite with an us, and we end up with nitrous acid. So therefore HNO2 is nitrous acid. Now the last one I'm going to guide you through is this one, H2SO4. Again we look at the anion, and from this anion what we do is we assess that there is in fact oxygen. So we follow the flow chart to the right. Polyatomic name of this ion is sulfate. Therefore, we continue to the right on the flow chart, and we see that this is going to be sulfuric acid. Again, we use the root of the anion. We are then going to follow with ic acid. So therefore, this is sulfuric acid, H2SO4. So now I want you to try one. Here's our compound, H2SO3. I want you to follow the flow chart and see if you can come up with a name. 
So the name of this one was sulfurous acid. It's sulfurous acid because the anion, sulfite, does have an oxygen in it. Therefore, we follow the flow chart to the right. And because the anion is named sulfite, we then follow it to the left, and we see that as sulfurous acid. We can actually also use the flow chart going in the other direction. So if we're given the name of an acid and need to come up with its chemical formula, what we can do is start with the name. It's important to remember that when writing the formulas for acids, we're actually going to be utilizing a system very similar to that of the ionic system, where we are going to need to match charges. So if we're dealing with a polyatomic anion that has a charge of minus 2, we're going to need to balance that with two hydrogen ions, H+, plus, which each have a charge of plus 1. If the charge on the polyatomic anion is minus 1, then we only need one hydrogen. If it has one hydrogen, we call it monoprotic. If it has two hydrogens, we call it diprotic. And if it has three acidic hydrogens, we call it triprotic. For example, hydrofluoric acid, earlier we went from formula to name, but now let's take it from name to formula. So we see hydroic acid, and we know that there is an anion without oxygen. Because the root is fluor, we know that we are dealing with fluorine. Therefore, what we are dealing with is HF. So we can go and use the flow chart in the opposite direction as well. Let's do another example. In this example, we're going to look at the writing of the formula for bromous acid. Now, because bromous acid ends in OUS, we know that it's based off of the polyatomic ion that ends in ite. This means it must be based off of the polyatomic ion bromite. Bromite is BrO2 with a charge of minus 1. Because of this, we know we need one hydrogen, which means that the formula for bromous acid is HBrO2. So go ahead and practice with this. I want you to write the chemical formula for phosphoric acid. Now, phosphoric acid formula is H3PO4. Phosphoric acid ends in ic, which means we're dealing with the polyatomic ion phosphate. Phosphate is PO4 with a charge of 3 minus. This means that you need 3 hydrogen in order to balance the charge. Again, this is based on our ionic naming system. So here we have a situation where we have a negative 3 charge from the polyatomic ion. So we need a total of plus 3 from the hydrogens. Each hydrogen is plus 1. Therefore, we need 3 of them. Therefore, is H3PO4. So that wraps up this video. Let's do a quick recap. Today we discussed how to convert between names and formulas and formulas and names of acids. And specifically, we discussed how to utilize the flow chart to convert between. Now, I want you to remember the mnemonic of if you ate something gross, you say ick, which reminds you that if the polyatomic anion ends in eight, your acid is going to end in ick. Remember, as we're going through this process, that if you're dealing with an anion of a charge of minus 1, minus 2, or minus 3, you're going to have to match that with the number of hydrogens, which each contribute a plus 1 charge. So I'd like to thank Sonny Fox and Alexandra Brind for writing the script, filming, and editing this video. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.